Hi folks, welcome back to the shop. Today I want to talk about what I feel is the best budget multimeter on the market right now. Uh, both of these meters are made by a company called Kaiweets. Uh, Kaiweets is, was founded in 2018 and since they've come on the market they brought a lot of innovations to uh, multimeters and test devices. Um, these two meters uh, have some differences uh, that I want to talk about today. but. Uh, there, I'm not going to do any testing uh, for accuracy. There's a ton of videos on YouTube where electrical engineers have dialed up power supplies, you know, anywhere from zero volts to high voltage, and proven the accuracy of these meters. I have no question about their their accuracy. But what I want to talk about today is just the key features I think that make these uh, interesting, and uh, the differences between these two meters to to help you uh, make a decision in purchasing. The first thing right off the bat that you'll notice with these meters is they have a high visibility display. It's very easy to see from across the shop. Uh, uh, it's multicolor display and uh, just really uh, if you've owned a multimeter before you'll know that uh, one of the uh, frustrations is uh, the backlight going off in a short period of time. Well with these meters uh, you know they stay on for quite a period of time before they shut off uh, and of course there is no issue with the backlight turning off so you can monitor this meter from across your shop uh, and, and, and know the status without having to uh, turn on the backlight. Or it's really just a nice feature to be able to, to so easily read these meters. Um, now right now you'll notice the, the switch on this meter is going between uh, four different settings. It's testing to see automatically if we want AC or DC voltage, resistance or continuity. Um, so if I were to touch these leads together, you'll notice it latches on, test continuity. Right? When I let off, it's going to go back to auto and go back to looking for these other, uh, these other selections. If I then plug it into this um, and test for voltage on this extension cord, you'll see that it's going to show we got 122 volts. Uh, it shows that it's AC voltage right on, in the display. You know, so pretty handy. Also, I, I should mention there, it sh shows the hertz. Another thing I think is very interesting about these, it shows the, the frequency of 60 hertz there on top, right? You don't have to switch over to the hertz setting, which is further along on the on the meter's dial. Uh, so very nice to have both of those on the same display. But uh, yeah, the uh, uh, that automatic feature is, is, is really nice. Um, the third thing I really like about these meters is uh, they're, they've, they've got a, an enhancement here that really makes them a little bit foolproof. So if I come out of this auto mode, I start hitting the function key and I switch to the different settings, <clears throat> You'll notice I'm doing that. It's, it's blinking below these leads. It's kind of hard to lead to see. But if I go over to right there at amps, for example, I'm going to do it one more time here. Go back to amps. You can see it's flashing here, telling me where to plug in the red cable, right? Uh, and lead is on the screen. Makes it very, very clear that you would need to change the lead on this over to this other port setting. So that's something that makes it very handy. Uh, somewhat foolproof. Uh, if you ever owned a multimeter, uh, at some point in time, there's a very good chance that you uh, had it wired up for testing amps and then went to test voltage and all of a sudden you find that you've uh, burned out the fuses in your meter. Now, if I try to switch off of this function, for example, it won't let me do it, right? It won't let me change to volts. So that kind of makes it so you won't make that mistake. Um, and if I pull this cable out, See if I can pull that out here without messing up how we've set this up. Um, you can see it flashed for volts and it went back into automatic mode. Uh, and I'll just I'll just put it back in automatic mode to show again here. And you see it's flashing that the wire should go here. Another thing I think it's neat, it works the other way around too. So if I were to plug this wire over here into amps, look how it switches to amps automatically. On the meter, it switches automatically when I switch the wire. So it's on the right setting. If I pull out of there, it goes back into automatic mode, right? Come over here, it's back on voltage. So that is a big change to multimeters. Uh, really helps you from making a mistake. Even if you know exactly what you're doing and, and you understand that the probes have to be hooked up into the right place, it really can prevent you from making a mistake. Uh, you know, maybe when you're in a hurry or you've got uh, some distractions going on when you're trying to run the meter, but just really a nice feature. Um, and, and the last thing that I really like about these is they, of course, they have a non-contact, or you know, yeah, non-contact voltage tester over here on the on the far right. And they both have this feature. It gives a L here and, and beeps slowly. One green light at the top on this uh, ST600Y Kaiweets meter. But if I slide it over, you could see 
it detects more voltage, the beeps become more rapid. And now you can see it's showing high voltage there when I test on this wire. H here, two green lights and a red at the top. So the non-contact voltage tester works well. But what I really like about it, and I think what makes it unique, is that when I go in here, you can do what's called a live test. You can just take the positive lead, don't need the negative lead, you can put that in there and it beeps. Now this is excellent if you're trying to find a breaker, you know, and, and, you, can, and you can plug this into receptacle, uh, go flip the breakers and, and, and find out which one you need to flip without having to have an additional piece of equipment. So really a lot of features in these meters, um, but those are really the, 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 the key four or five things that I think really separate them from any other meter. Uh, one of the things I think, if I, I'm sure I probably failed to mention, is it does show the temperature on here uh, as well the whole time, which is, which is nice. Um, now it shows it in Celsius. Unfortunately, this is one thing I really wish they would change, is when you turn the temperature setting, it shows Fahrenheit at the top and then Celsius here, but there's no way to toggle these. There's no way to flip these around to where Celsius up here is up here and Fahrenheit's here so that when you switch off of it, that it would show Fahrenheit at the top. So it would be nice if they let you change the unit of measure for, for temperature. But so those are the key features that uh, I like about these meters that they both have in common. Um, now the key differences between these two, I'll turn on the KM601, uh, of course, this CAM601, you know, uh, this, this guy here is really, you know, more of an advanced meter, more advanced features, uh, but those key features are it has a min-max button, right? So when you hook this up, but you hook this up and then turn the meter on and hit that min-max button, it'll tell you the highest maximum voltage recorded and the minimum voltage recorded, uh, which is very handy. Uh, so it has that feature. It can test uh, millivolts and milliamps. Uh, this one cannot. Uh, it, uh, this one can do a thousand volts. This one is rated up to 600 volts. Uh, this one doesn't have a range change over here. You can, you have a button for changing the range. Of course that changes the decimal point uh, if you're, if you're testing voltage. And if I see if I can get it to, yeah. Another thing I don't like about this one, you gotta go all the way around to get back to volts, right? So we're on voltage there now, okay. So if I hit range, you'll see it's just moving the, yeah, moving the decimal point. Yeah. Yep, yeah, moves the decimal point to different locations. This one doesn't have that feature. Um, and another key thing is between these two meters is the latching out of auto for continuity. So on this CAM601 right now, I'm gonna show you how quick it latches for continuity in auto. To get auto back on, I gotta hold the function key down, put it back in auto. Okay, here we go. Now you'll see it goes into continuity mode, but not nearly as fast as the KM601. Watch how quick this guy this guy's going to go into uh, latch on and out of auto mode. Of course, the same thing here. I have to hold down the auto button here to get it back in auto, I believe. There we go. It says auto on the display. So let's see how quick it comes in out of auto and into uh, continuity testing mode. See, much quicker. Yeah. That is a key difference. I, I really wish the, the ST600Y was faster to latch. Uh, but you know, you can always go to manual mode and switch over to continuity and the KM or the ST600Y uh, latches on very quickly. See that? So if, if you're testing a lot of continuity and you don't want to wait for it to come out of auto, you can do it manually. Um, so for, for me, you know, I, picking between these two meters is kind of tough, right? Um, things I don't like about the KM601. I don't like the fact the leads wire onto the bottom. Like there's a lot of things about this one I like. I like the size. I like the size of this ST600Y meter. Uh, it feels good in the hand. I like the fact the leads mount on the front instead of on the bottom. I like this key configuration because as you're operating this, you can, you can press all these keys with your thumb, right? Uh, you don't have to change your hand position. I mean, whether you're turning it on or, or changing the functions, or, or turning on the light in the back. You know, with this meter over here, the, the KM600 or 601, you, you got to turn it on up top. Uh, there's an autom automatic power off override button here. There is a, the light button on the back over here. So you have buttons in 
three different places. Not that you use this one much, but you got buttons in different places. They're not all down here on the bottom like they are on this guy. To me, this one is just more intuitive, right? Uh, even the display, you'll notice uh, it's got this green arrow. If I hit select over to the yellow side, the arrow turns yellow. You know, a minor difference, but and I don't like the fact it beeps as you change functions. But but the other great thing is you can you can back with the function button. When you change functions on this meter, you are you've got to go all the way around the dial. Right? There's no, there's no way to go back, whereas this, this uh, ST600Y lets you go backwards and forwards, which is very handy. But just, I found this meter to be more intuitive, the uh, 600Y. Uh, I wish it had a min-max function, that would be great. Um, but that's some of the things I like to see on this, you know, a, a, a min-max function, uh, a magnet, and, and potentially a hook on this guy to mount it. Um, and let the user toggle this uh, unit of measure here for temperature, you know, let them put Fahrenheit there. But I'd really like to see those three features in this multimeter. But so I feel this one's more intuitive. Uh, I, I like the layout of this meter better. The screen is just slightly smaller. I mean, we're talking about, you know, this one's a little over two inches, I think, uh, on, on the width. Um, and this one's just at two inches or so. So it's a minor difference in width and it's the same with the length. Uh, just not that big of a difference in the screen sizes. But this one here I just found to be very, very handy, uh, much smaller. It's always great when the leads are on the top. These leads here, you know, they kind of get in the way. You're, you push them off to the side or the back. They, they hook on a table when you set it down. They're really not in a great place, you know, on this meter. Um, now it does light up here on these lights. You'll notice as I've been changing the function key that it flashes down here to tell you where to put the leads in the bottom, just like this one does. But, you know, this is just a better layout. I think, unless you're dealing with the clamp meter, it's best to have these leads on top of the meter. Uh, so after using them for a while, uh, I definitely prefer the ST600Y because it is more intuitive. It's, it's uh, handier. I like the layout better, uh, the size of it, etc. Uh, but, you know, I really do like the fact that the min max is on this uh, KM601. So if you're looking for features and you need some of those key features I've mentioned, uh, millivolts and uh, milliamps and if you need to go up to a thousand volts of course because the KM601 is uh, up to a thousand volts it has longer you know larger leads right uh, you can see that since the ST600Y is rated for up to 600 volts that the leads are a little bit smaller you know and, that, and that's typical for multimeters uh, that you'd have that difference in size so um, unless you need those uh, one of those key four or five I think it's about five features the fifth one being the quick latching um, but unless you need one of those five features, I would totally go with the ST600Y. Uh, it's just a smaller, handier uh, meter that I, it's just a lot easier to use the function keys and spin these leads out of your way. <clears throat> Definitely laid out better. But I'm sure Kiwitz would continue to improve on these meters. And you know, we're going to see a lot of, uh, uh, I'm sure, innovations in these. But these are super handy meters to have, uh, as I said, as a, an extra meter. Uh, and really, with the high visibility alone, just makes them uh, really super handy. Uh, but with that said, uh, uh, I appreciate you joining us today. Please consider uh, uh, subscribing and uh, like the video. And uh, we'll see you the next time.